Hey guys, happy Splash here. Good evening. So tonight we are going to do the new Divine Arena. And yeah, so let's get right into it. Oh, where's the sound? There it is. All right, cool. Heading over to Divine Arena now. As you'll see, we have a... This is a Rajan Flaming on the left and a Harbinger of Darkness on the right. Looks like we are using melee. It says the warrior's melee combat skills are unmatched and tense will heal serious wounds. Okay. On the right, we'll use stones to withstand the blow and then up to use the shooters, which in this case will be the ranged heroes. So yeah, let's start off. Okay, well, we have the stones over here that have a little bit of block. We have the tents over here that will heal our allies. And then also, I guess, well, they've already healed them because they're not in play. So at the start of the turn, we will heal our allies. Okay, let us start with... Let's start with the hero with high health first. So we'll summon this hero, and we're going to summon this one in the middle. The reason why is because it gets an attack boost for every hero that is around themselves when they first come on play. So in this case, these three stones will count as a target <clears throat> to increase the attack of this hero. See me there? Should take a look at the warlord skills as well. So they have set the attack of our heroes to 1 for a turn. They have a ranged demon that will have a decrease of attack to our heroes, and then also an attack boost to their ranged heroes. Okay. They have this hero over here that gets an attack boost for every hero that comes into play, and then also gets an attack boost at the end. Let's see combat, combat. Sure, okay. We'll activate our hero skill over here, and we'll deal damage to heroes before they attack. And we'll also summon the new Ogork over here. The Ogork will deal damage to three random heroes. We summon it on the bottom because we want to destroy more things first. And so once we destroy more things first, we'll have a better chance to deal damage to other targets. And unlike other battles, we are summoning our melee heroes in row C or actually, sorry, row three over here, because they are all going to be melee heroes, so we don't want to actually block their attacks. So as you can see, we have our damage skill happening. We have the Mina over here that deals damage whenever one of our heroes attacks, and then also has accuracy. At this point now, it has extra attack because it did attack our Warlord. So let's see what we can do here. We'll do our melee summon. Okay, good spot. This one here also deals damage to heroes around themselves. The end, and we will follow it up with this melee hero over here. On, well, actually, this one, yeah, this one has decent attack, so yeah, we'll, we'll use it. So when it comes to play, it deals damage to another hero. In this case, we actually did destroy the range hero here. We are taking a little bit of damage for every attack. Okay, and it looks like we gained an attack boost as well whenever a hero is uh, well, an, whenever an enemy is destroyed. So, oh, okay. So that's how that new, <clears throat> that's how that new skill works. Okay, they use their hero skill to set the attack of our heroes to one. If we can get rid of the Mina, we should be all set because of our heroes with the high health. <laughs> and you can see the two extra attacks, or the two attacks rather. We have the ghost over here that deals damage to our warlord whenever one of their heroes attacks. And then also if we attack their warlord, we'll deal damage to one of our heroes. Uh, that being the case, we do want to summon heroes that can take that damage. So 25. So we have one, two, only this one here. So what we can do, however, let's see. Block, block. Summon the melee hero over in B2. So that way, if one of our heroes are destroyed, we can still attack. Oh no, the Ogork. So we need the Ogork to actually deal the random damage to these heroes. Okay, they have the range hero over here that will set the attack of two of our heroes to one for turn. And so even though we do have the lanes blocked, we are going to be taking damage off of each attack as you see here. Okay, so it is close. So combat will destroy this. Uh, it's close over here too. How much damage? We're taking five to eight. So actually, no, we're going to take lethal anyways off of our first. Uh, no, no, I guess we have one more attack to go through this here. Summoner. Actually, we'll summon our 
melee hero here. This one has three extra attacks. So I'll trigger the first one, we'll take the damage, and then destroy the unit. Okay, and so now it is this lane over here, as we said before, we have very low health. But we do have some blockers here, so... Could happen. Okay, our tent is now destroyed. We'll summon this hero again, and we'll summon it here in B2. B, or actually A2, rather. Okay, it comes into play, deals some damage. And then we attacked and destroyed the range hero. Okay, and also getting an attack boost for every time one of our order heroes attacks. So in this case, the Fury here is an order hero. And that triggers the attack boost. Ooh, okay, this hero here has vampirism, so that is why the additional damage destroyed this hero. Let's see, combat, combat. We'll give an attack boost to our melee hero. So in this case now, this melee hero will actually attack for 80. And this is, oh, that's 116. That is enough for lethal. Yeah, just making sure we have a blocker here. In combat. One, two, three, four. And there you go. So as you see, some of those ranged heroes are going to be problematic. But as long as we can take the damage, we should be okay. We're also still in the world event, so that is why we have the runes here as rewards. Okay, let us do the range side now. I gotta get a different chair because the posture is so bad. <laughs> okay, so let us take a look at the Warlord skills first. So they have that damage skill to deal damage to our heroes before they attack. They have the melee demon, that is the one that deals damage at the end of the turn. And then the attack boost to their melee heroes, which in this case is going to be all of them. Okay, they have those tents again, so we'll need to destroy those. And then we have our stones over here that will help us block. Okay, what is going to make the most sense? So we did deal, we took a lot of damage actually from the previous battle with the Mina, so let us make sure that we can actually keep her alive. So we'll summon the Mina on the bottom row over here, or bottom lane, and just deal some damage to this tent. Okay, as you can see, it is healing at the beginning of the turn for each one of these tents. Okay, they activated their damage skill. So that being the case, we want to summon a hero next turn that can take the damage, so we'll avoid summoning this hero and this hero. All right, and we'll also avoid summoning this hero here. So this hero, it gets an attack boost when it comes into play for every ally on our side. Hmm. Okay, looks like the Ogork over here does have a lot of block for every wounded hero on our side. Now, so I guess the damage skill happens first and then the block happens after. Okay, we are still dealing damage to their Warlord because of the Mino, so we do want to keep it alive. Let's see their block here. Oh, okay, so their block actually now is too large for us to destroy this hero, which is unfortunate. Hmm. I guess we can, yeah, well, I guess we'll go just for more attacks. Let's see here, combat, combat. Hmm. How much damage does the random damage do? Okay, so it could potentially kill any one of our heroes because of their low health. So what we'll do is we'll do the attack skill and then we'll also do our demon summon. The reason why is because we do want to get as many attacks in as possible and so we'll continue with summoning our hero with the okay health. Okay, hey, this works too. So this hero, it gives block to one of our allies and then also whenever block triggers it will deal damage to one of their heroes. So in this case it's actually one of these stones that do have block. Okay, they have the large melee hero now, also with that damage skill at the end. Oh, I, I forgot. I'm not online right now. Might as well just do that for now. <laughs> I'm still here. Ooh, that random damage. All right. Uh, not looking too good. We can't destroy the Ogrork at this point because of the block and then we also can't destroy the fire demon here because of the high health so we're gonna have to restart and try it again yeah that Ogrork is so big and it can deal so much damage all right let's try that again oh 
Okay, we are going to have to destroy those tents and also be able to deal enough damage to the Ogor for when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fine. We'll start with our range hero over here. This range hero has vampirism and we'll be able to destroy this tent over here. I guess we should have leave, left these spots open for the Ghost and the Mina to protect them. Uh, but for now, having the bottom lane is okay. Hey, there's the Ogork again. All right, can we deal enough damage to destroy this? Well, we'll try and see what happens. So we'll do our ranged summon again. This one has the attack boost. Okay, and I guess we lost it because of the damage skill. So at this point now, with 24 block and potentially enough random damage to destroy this, could be in the same situation as the last battle. <laughs> Okay, let's see what their block is at now. So it's at 59, so we won't, be able to, we won't be able to destroy it in combat. Okay, well, I guess we will give up and try it again. What a way for them to introduce the no, new hero with the different skills. Okay, well, I guess another technique we can do is... Yeah, I guess we can save our high attack heroes for when the Ogork does come in. So let's start with our ranged hero here. This one will give block to another one of our heroes, and then also trigger off the random damage whenever one of our block heroes are attacked. Okay, they did that damage skill, and we need to make sure that we don't summon a hero that will take that damage. Hmm, okay. So we have the Kong Monkey King over here. When it is attacked, it will reflect the damage equal to its own attack. So in this case... Okay, so it does also have... Oh, it doesn't have spikes. Okay, it just has that reflect damage. Okay, so combat. Combat there. Ah, this is fine. Okay, so... Ooh, we can actually set the attack of their heroes to one. So actually, we'll take less reflect damage. Summon this range here over here. Okay. Ooh, all that heal. All right. This is a much more difficult battle than I thought it would be. Okay, they also get block at the end of the turn. So that is why we are not able to deal damage here. And we are still reflecting that damage. So let's just make sure that we have enough damage to destroy it. So we need to deal 10 plus the 8. So we need to deal 18, which will come from this range hero. Whoa! So we did take some reflect damage. That is okay. We also did destroy a tent. We have the melee hero over here that will, let's see, has block and then also steals attack from heroes in the line. We have the melee summon. And we do have our Dragara that can deal additional damage off of the attack. Just waiting for that overwork to come in, which it does not. That's good. Okay, they are taking that random damage off of the block. We'll do a range summon now, and then we'll follow it up with... Ah, this one isn't bad. Summon this range hero over here. When it kills something, it will deal additional damage to another hero. So right now we're just making sure that we can get rid of their attackers and then also keep these stones alive so that way we can trigger off the random damage off of this hero. Okay, looks like we lost our blocker. Okay, and then this hero here, the Ogre once again. So it has 18 plus 32, so you can deal 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So not quite enough to destroy that. Uh, we, uh, we couldn't use our random damage with the ghost though. Let's do that because we are going to lose most of these heroes. So we'll summon the ghost over here to avoid these melee heroes. We'll deal some damage to the warlord from combat and then also the extra damage off of our ghost uh, here. And what we want is our damage skill to deal damage to the ogork so that we can attack it with the Dragar. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, we are taking some damage right now. Oh, the health is going to be way too much. This hero here has a death trigger to deal damage to one of our female heroes. So in this case, it would be right now the Ghosta. Uh, do we have anything against this? We need to deal 25 to actually destroy this, but we do not. What we can do is... Yeah, we'll do our um, we'll do our range summon over here just to, just to block. Okay, so as you see, they do have let's see, they do currently have lethal on this board. Okay, the combat over there. Oh, and there we go. We're gonna get this done. <laughs> but as you can see, their melee heroes are actually very strong in terms of health, and then our attacks are not that good in terms of attack strength. Okay, let us try this again. Let us get rid of the tent. We'll summon the ranged hero down here. Yeah. Okay, we'll destroy the tent. Okay, we have that damage skill happening. <laughs> okay, we have the Olaf here with the damage skill whenever is destroyed okay we're gonna summon the yeah this is fine we do need to destroy some heroes so we'll summon the amino over here okay okay the death trigger did destroy our amino but that is okay we still have our attacker okay this is fine we're gonna continue and summon our ghosta to deal some damage to heroes. Yeah, we'll summon the ghost over here in C1, deal some damage to this tent. Then we'll have this lane open so that we, this hero can potentially destroy one of these tents or destroy yeah. itself. Okay, they did the melee skill. Whoa! Okay, I didn't see the damage happening there. Okay, let's see. Combat, combat. Don't have anything to destroy this hero, but we can destroy the tent at least. We'll set the attack of their heroes to one, and then we'll also do we'll do our range summon. Okay, so we now have enough damage to destroy the tent. Um, and we'll follow it up with our ranged hero over here. This is the one that deals damage whenever block is triggered. Okay, and as you can see, we are dealing additional damage to the Warlord every time we do attack. Okay, ooh, damage happening over there, the random damage happening over to our heroes, the reflect damage happening because of our other hero. Okay, and now we have the Ogork over here. It only has six block this time, so... Might be able to destroy it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six times two is 12, because you have to factor in each attack. So that's 12 plus 29, that's 41. So that means we need to summon a hero with 24 damage, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that should be enough. All right, so we'll summon the Drugar. Okay, we can actually destroy the Ogork this time. And now we do potentially have lethal on this line. Are being blocked by the melee here. Okay, uh, let's see. So, let's see. Combat will destroy this, even with this regeneration. 20. Oops. I know this hero here actually deals random damage whenever it attacks. Could potentially destroy this melee hero down here. And we're going to keep this lane open so that way we can still trigger off the ghost effect. Okay, next turn looks like we can do an attack boost to our range heroes. Okay, the ghost skill did destroy the melee hero down here. We'll do our range attack boost, and that should be enough for lethal. Whoa! And there you go. So I can see this battle was a little more difficult because we had to use our range heroes in a different way. 
epic. And some good RNG towards the end with our Ghost of Skill. Okay, well, that was the Divine Arena. We'll check back in in about two days or so. And yeah, we'll go from there. This is Happy Splasher, signing off.